Hey guys, what's up? This is Tony from alphapursuits.com. In this video, we are going to take a look at the VIX indicators to see what the market is telling us and also take a look at the XPX technical analysis. Stay tuned. This information is for informational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before placing any trades. So let's take a look at VIX indicators first. And I have done some calculation here. Uh, this is essentially the ratio calculation, uh, VIX divided by VVIX, and doing the percentile rank calculation to see that particular ratio for that particular day is high or not comparing to the 250 uh, prior trading days, so one year worth of data. So when we're looking at this ratio calculation for that particular day, it is 100%, which means it is very high uh, within this one year of data. And we can see the same happening here with VIX and VIX 3M, VIX and VIX 6M. So essentially the market is thinking uh, in, in the longer term, probably the current uptrend is not going to last. But in a shorter term, which when we look at VIX 90 and VIX, it has been dropping quite a bit here. So VIX 90 is looking at nine days for looking volatility. And, you know, in the shorter term, again, market is thinking it's probably continuing to going to climb a little bit more, but that's probably not going to last. And the same thing here, we're looking at the percentile rank of the value, VIX value of itself, rather than the ratio, this is of itself. Uh, as you can see, the number looks a little bit different. And this is why I like to use uh, the ratio calculation rather than just looking at the value itself. Because sometimes uh, you can see a substantially different story popping up. So in this case, as we can see, uh, VIX has remained pretty high, VIX 3 and pretty high too. VIX 9D is still pretty high. It's around 53% when comparing to the one year data, previous one year data. Uh, whereas VVIX has dropped substantially. So this is really at the low end looking at, you know, uh, the number of 80 something and historically speaking also not just within this one year range, but historically speaking, this is actually towards to the low end. So what does this mean? So VVIX is the volatility of volatility. It's calculating using the out of the money option of VIX options. Now, when it's very low, it means VIX options are cheaper right now. So in case if you do decide to trade VIX options, what you want to do is choose a strategy to buy options rather than sell options. And obviously, you know, depending on your market bias, depending on your, your thinking, which way the market is going to move, uh, you have different choices to trade options. Uh, you can buy options to anticipate market moving up. You can also sell options in in anticipation to market moving up. So based on this value, VBA IX value, we can choose we should choose the one to buy rather than one to sell. And this also BVX is low also means uh, low volatility is expected, at least for the short term, because things can change instantaneously really. And let me show you an, an example here. So back in late uh, May early June, VVIX actually dropped down below 100. And the reason for that is because there was a little bit of uptrend happening. Uh, and again, this is a very good example of where, why I like to look at uh, the ratio calculation rather than just um, the number itself. Because you know you can see VVIX is dropping down so much. So you might think, oh, okay, so the volatility has come down quite a bit. Uh, probably this uptrend might keep going up, but looking at all this number, it's all red. Looking at the ratio number also confirm it is all pretty much, you know, everything is red. And what happened is that, let's take a look at the chart here. So eight, uh, end of May. So right here, there was a bit of a trend going on and then you stay sideways. Uh, early June and then all of a sudden it just dropped like significantly. So as you can imagine by using, by looking at this VIX uh, data, VIX and VIX indicators data, we could have sort of seen, foreseen that, um, you know, because this is where the market was going sideways. VVIX still remained low, 
VIX is sort of okay. It has dropped down from sort of a recent high from you know as high as 29. It, it's now down 23. So if you if we are not looking at this ratio, we might think, oh, okay, everything is fine. Probably you know the uptrend might continue. But when we dig in a little bit deeper, you can see uh, forward-looking uh, indicators. So, sort of market is telling us, no, it is not fine yet. It's pretty. Uh, the, the VIX and VIX 3M ratio pretty high, 6M ratio pretty high. In fact, VIX 90 and VIX, it jumped up on June 3rd. No, I'm sorry, June 6th. So June 3rd, so let's take a look at the number here. So June 3rd was right here, okay? And then June 6th, we are still up here. So. It, this is actually a few days before you drop down substantially and that is already giving us a warning This might not last long Again another indication of how powerful this could be Okay, so that is that let's move on to XPX analysis Now let's move on to XPX technical analysis. So in the last week's technical analysis Which this is the chart I was looking at last week uh, there was a, a recent downtrend here and we sort of broke that uptrend, it went sideways and my personal bias was once it hit here, if it resolves to the upside, it is going to be a pretty bullish, at least in the short term, uh, signal. And that's sort of what happened this week as we can see here, it broke that current downtrend and then it went up and even penetrated actually to the 25 day uh, penetrated the 25 days moving average which is this purple line down here so that's pretty significant this is definitely a bullish at least for the short term now there is a large gap that I've been watching which uh, they, they used to be two and this one got filled and we still have this one here at the 4,000 level. So uh, as this move through up, if it, so there are several things that I'm, I will be looking at in the, in, in the coming days and coming weeks. Uh, first, whether this will break this uptrend. If for some reason you start moving sideways and breaks it, then uh, this becomes bearish, obviously. That's, that's the first thing I'll be looking at. Second is as this move upwards or sideways, whether this is going to penetrate this 50 day moving average, this yellow line here, this is 50, 50 days. And in case you're wondering, this uh, blue line, line is the 200 days. So I'll be looking at whether this uptrend is going to penetrate that. If it does, then again, that's bullish. And whether it's going to penetrate this second downtrend, which is a much longer, and obviously it would be much stronger signal uh, compared to this shorter one. So once it gets here, which likely, depending on how fast or how slow it moves, whether you start moving sideways or it goes up upwards, either way, it should get there somewhere around August or before August, really, depending on which way it starts moving. So, you know, that's another uh, point I will be looking at and obviously this large gap once it fills this large gap uh, again that's another uh, place I will be sort of pay attention to and, and and see what happens then and I know a lot of people who doubt technical analysis they say it, it's it's not able to predict anything and I to be honest used to be one of them because I did not understand what technical analysis is all about. And the reason I turned around is once I started learning um, all these various technical analysis uh, techniques, and obviously it's not 100% accurate. It, it, you cannot predict future, period. That's the way it is. But what happens is that a lot of people are actually looking at the same thing that we are looking at because they use the same type of technical analysis, if not exactly the same as what I'm doing here. So what will happen is that when it gets to that certain point, for example, crossing uh, moving average 25, you know, crossing moving average 50 days, 
they will be pay attention to that and act according to that. Whether it penetrates, which means bullish, it hits it and then come back down, which is bearish. And obviously we have different types of traders, right? They are longer long-term investors, they are day traders. So for day traders, they are very sensitive, so to speak, in, in to, to especially more sensitive compared to long-term uh, investors to those kind of signals. So obviously, considering everything is equal, if there's no major uh, events happening, if everything stays the same, then those technical analysis people, people who use technical analysis mainly to trade, uh, they will be the one driving the market. And obviously, there are so many, you know, market is, is very complex. So there are so many external factors happening, news coming out, events happening. Uh, for example, next week, Wednesday, there will be a CPI, Consumer Price Index number coming out. Now, whether that's going to be a huge driver, based on the current climate, probably, because, you know, we're talking about inflation here. So based on that, next Wednesday, uh, essentially in, in a few days next week, uh, that, that might, you know, completely ruin the technical analysis that we are doing here because, again, that's an additional data set that gets feed into the market. But again, if that force is not strong enough, then technical analysis might take over, you know, day traders, uh, people who are looking at this technical chart, they may say, okay, so it hasn't reached any of these key points. Let's just keep going. And then so, you know, it might be a bad news, which might not be strong enough for it to uh, go all the way down and break this uptrend, let's say. Then it's going to stay right in the middle here, which there's nothing uh, based on what I'm looking at. Obviously, different people look at different time frame. There might be something on different time frames. But uh, based on this daily chart, you know, when they say, okay, there's nothing happening, it should, in theory, keep going up until it hits this moving average 50 days, 50 days moving average, then why not do that? Market should do it. And, and so, again, there, there's the psychological component that will drive the market to move that way. And this is why techn technical analysis could be very powerful. Okay, so I think that's enough for today. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave in the comment below. And please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.